Dear friends, uh, yeah, hello friends. I am Dr. Ajay Adav, anesthesia faculty at DBMCI. So let's see, recall questions. Hope uh, you all had done very well because what six, seven questions I found related to anesthesia or with some overlaps were largely easy. So let's start question number one. What does ASA grade three signify in preoperative health assessment of surgical patients? Mild systemic disease, moderate systemic disease. Uh, mic is mute. Okay, let me see. Just a second. There is some issue with the mic. Hello. नहीं मेरे तो ठीक आ रहा है किसका माइक आपका सर आपका आ, यहां से इसका ओबीएस का जी सर ना ओबीएस में तो बढ़िया दिखा रहा है मेरा फर्स्ट क्लास ये दे नहीं चल रहा सर माइक ऑफ माइक मेरा तो वो एक सेकंड है ओके सर ना चल शुरू करता हूँ वापस शुरू करना शुरू कर चल ठीक है ओके सो या फ्रेंड्स देर वॉज सम इश्यू विद माइक सो आई एम डॉक्टर अजय यादव एंड द क्वेश्चन इन टूडे एग्जाम रिलेटेड टू एनेस्थीसिया और विद सम ओवरलैप वट एवर द क्वेश्चन फाइव सिक्स सेवन क्वेश्चन आई कुड गेट दे वर लार्जली आई विल से इजी anesthesia part or ventilation part was comparatively easy and uh, so question number 1 what does asa grade 3 signify in pre operative health assessment of surgical patients mild systemic disease moderate systemic disease severe systemic illness with functional limitation severe systemic illness with severe limitation okay so asa you know stand for american society of anesthesiologists which has classified patient into six categories based on their medical condition so we can see from here these are uh, you could cool notes so asa1 is the normal healthy patient and uh, asa2 mild disease but no functional limitation asa3 severe disease or some books they say moderate to severe disease with functional limitation asa4 incapacitating severe disease which is constant threat to life Five is moribund patient. Moribund patient means he is not going to survive. Uh, and ASC six is brain dead patient. This is obviously applicable for organ donations. So with this background, now let's go back to our question. ASC three they have asked. so asa3 means severe disease with functional limitation so it is c now okay mild disease is obviously asa2 moderate disease normally moderate to severe they say but moderate normally doesn't fall in anything so that's also ruled out uh, see now we have two options c and d severe systemic illness with functional limitation is obviously asa3 severe systemic illness with severe limitation that somehow indicates severe limitation means you can say incapacitating disease and that becomes asa4 next question a high flow nasal cannula delivers how much oxygen per minute 70 60 25 40 uh, this high flow nasal cannula uh, this is our igor cool notes high flow nasal cannula they deliver 60 to 80 liters so they deliver 60 to 80 liters so as the name suggest means they are delivering very high flow 60 to 80 liter through nasal cannula so what is the advantage you can say that uh, it produces mild 
पॉजिटिव एंड एक्सपिरेटरी प्रेशर अराउंड थ्री टू फोर एम एम एच जी एंड कम्फर्ट डेफिनेटली पेशेंट कम्फर्ट इज बेटर इफ यू कंपेयर टू नॉन इन्वेस्टिव वेंटिलेशन एंड गैसेज आर ऑब्वियसली ह्यूमिडिफाइड एंड इट डिक्रीजेज एनेटमिकल डेड स्पेस बाय डिक्रीजिंग कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड बिकॉज नाउ होल ऑफ द यू कैन से लंग्स आर फिल्ड विद सच हाई फ्लो ऑफ ऑक्सीजन सो कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड इज रिप्लेस डिक्रीजिंग एनेटमिकल डेड स्पेस so it provides 60 to 80 liter of oxygen so now let's see the choices if this all choices are correct then 70 60 25 40 so obviously they are ruled out 60 to 70 so we'll go for 70 because 60 to 80 actually question number 3 a 3 year old child is on ventilation with nasal cannula at 3 liter per minute what is the fio2 of this child 40 35 50 30% 30%. there is a very simple rule that each degree with all oxygen devices with each you can say liter each 1 liter increase in oxygen increases fio2 by 3 to 4% above 21% because when there is no oxygen means air oxygen is already at 21% anything beyond 21% each degree increase is going to increase by around 4% so now we can say it is 3 liter so 3 liter means each liter around 4% so means we have increased it by around 12% so 21 plus 12 will be around 33% so is that's a nearest value b fine and even more important than this is that you should know that what should be the maximum oxygen delivered by each of this oxygen delivery device and that's again our uh, igor cool notes and you can say this maximum oxygen so this is nasal cannula which they have asked and maximum oxygen with nasal cannula is around 40 to 50% and that occurs at 6 liter with simple oxygen mask again 50 to 60% and that is at 15 liter and then or 10 liter i think 10 liter and venturi mask 60% and that is at 15 liter and oxygen mask with reservoir you can give up to 80% and that is at 15 liter Fine. Question number four: Drug preferred for diabetic neuropathy, post-diabetic neuralgia, and spinal cord diseases. Pregabalin, carbamazepine, gabapentin, and fourth choice. I don't know whether that's correct or not. Streminophen or lamotegrin. I some students said lamotegrin, some said streminophen. So I don't know exactly what was the choice. So you know that for neuropathy, neuropathic pain is quite common that we encounter in our uh pain clinics and the most common neuropathy that we encounter is diabetic neuropathy nowadays the drug of choice for all kind of neuropathies is the pregabalin except trigeminal neuralgia and even glossopharyngeal neuralgia also trigeminal neuralgia and glossopharyngeal neuralgia they still respond best to carbamazepine however for all kind of neuropathy pain first choice is pregabalin and the second choice is gabapentin and that's again igor cool notes as i told you most common neuropathy is diabetic neuropathy and the drug of choice i told you is pregabalin followed by gabapentin except for trigeminalgia which is still respond best to carbamazepine a child with severe respiratory distress with respiratory of 90 all of the following should be done intubation ppv bag and mask ventilation oxygen of course i think there cannot be any question easy than this if it was a correct question from recall that too much respiratory rate means patient need e positive pressure ventilation either with bag or by intubation so we have to give positive pressure ventilation that can be accomplished by intubation or bag and mask ventilation depending on the circumstances depending on the availability however definitely preferred would be intubation but however due to some reason if you not able to intubate at least you can give positive pressure ventilation
with bag and masks. Of course, you cannot give oxygen at this stage. And that's what we have seen. Indication for mechanical ventilation, respiratory rate more than 35 breaths per minute. And here, respiratory rate is 90. And positive pressure ventilation does not mean that you are only doing mechanical ventilation by intubating. That can be given by non-invasive method also. That is by your uh, non-invasive ventilation with bag and mask. If you are doing manual ventilation or even with mask with the, your ventilator, you can do. Pinpoint pupil is seen in cocaine, opium, amphetamine, alcohol. Pinpoint, of course, beyond any second thought is opioids. Opioids. So this is again our notes. Egon anesthesia notes. So I, the effect is meiosis. And this meiosis is not because of effect on I. It is a central meiosis. And you know that there is no tolerance developed to meiosis also. Meiosis and constipation, there is no tolerance. Tolerance is there to all actions except meiosis and constipation. 7. A child with diaphragmatic hernia, I think the question was little uh, longer with some scaphoid, abdomen and other features were also there. But mostly it was, uh, the diagnosis was diaphragmatic hernia. All should be done except oxygen by mask, PPV, ET tube, bag and mask ventilation. This is diaphragmatic hernia is one of a very important contraindication for bag and mask ventilation. And that is again, we can see the contraindications for bag and mask ventilation. These are our equal cool notes. So, contraindications for bag and mask ventilation. So, biggest disadvantage of bag and mask ventilation is that if you are giving positive pressure with bag and mask ventilation, significant air will leak into stomach, will increase the intragastric pressure, increasing the risk of aspiration. So, anything where there is increased risk of aspiration, we should not use bag and mask ventilation like say full stomach patients. Very important. Pregnancy, intestinal obstruction, GRI full. Obesity, abdominal obesity, increasing intra-abdominal pressure or abdominal tumors, ascites, diabetes, gastroparesis, where this delays gastric emptying. High hernia patients, they have impaired tone of LDA, so vulnerable for aspiration. And four neonatal emergencies, where bag and mask ventilation is contraindicated is diaphragmatic hernia, preco-esophical fistula, meconium aspiration syndrome and pyloric stenosis. Diaphragmatic hernia, you know that the gut is already in the chest wall. So, giving positive pressure ventilation will lead to distension of the gut. That can cause compression of the lung, not only aspiration, and can further the can further worsen the hypoxia. So, these are the questions which I could find. Maybe some questions uh, definitely uh, may not be accurate because these are recall questions. Now, let me go to the link of YouTube and let me see your queries. If there are some other questions or uh, there is some correction you want to make. Okay, so let's go from. Let me see the queries. Let me go to queries. Okay. Jet. Okay, NR high sir, full DPS, we are live, okay. Child was 3 liter, so I told also 3 liters, so the question not. Uh, 3 liter, so 3 liter means around 33 percent. So the question, child was 5 years, which uh, child, I mean, which patient? This one or another one? Which question? Uh, which question was five year child? Anyway, it doesn't make difference. Truth. Uh, nasal flow cannula high was not mentioned. No, there are. This I am very sure that there were two questions. One question were related to high flow nasal cannula. 
and uh, the second question was related to nasal cannula with 3 liter so these two were definitely different questions these this has been confirmed by two three students to me on my telegram so yeah so this is question about fio2 Okay, last choice was M E triple in that question. Fine. Is capoid abdomen? Yes, diaphragmatic hernia. I told you. Chandrakant, can you clear what this eighty percent SPO two means? What do you want to say? Yes, diagonal mass contending. M E triple one will be correct. On the Saudi, there was only one question. Even okay, fine. If we say one question, then high flow. I mean, okay. If I remove highest FIO2 with nasal cannula, then again, I told you, uh, with nasal cannula, highest is 40 to 45, 50 percent. So here we'll go for 40% if it is FIO2. Fine. Okay, Chandrakant. If high flow nasal, I told so I told you high flow nasal cannula. If you remove only nasal cannula and maximum FIO2 or maximum oxygen, then it becomes 40%, 40 to 50%. So answer will be 40. Correct. Anything else? Any other question you could recall? No problem. Difficult to recall. So later also, if you have any question, uh, you are always welcome to ask us e either on our Facebook group or on Telegram group. I normally, I prefer Telegram. But if you post any query, please uh, just uh, tag me so that I can directly uh, receive that query and answer. I'm not getting any query. So I think I should close the session. So largely I can say yes, question. Uh, so in that you are saying that it was a uh, very spin. It was M triple in Okay, fine. Okay, let's change to M triple. Okay, fine. Thank you very much and my best wishes. So I am closing the session and I hope you are going to all come with flying colors. My best wishes.